I know this, you want to get better at this game, and so do I. So let's head to the practice tee, and today we do it under the watchful eye of the 2024 Michigan PGA Section Teacher of the Year, Kyle Martin. Thanks, Bill. Good to have you here, and today we focus on what we do in the scoring zone with our wedges straight ahead. Bill Hobson here. Welcome inside the MGL Sim Studio, where our friends at the Indoor Golf Shop have done a great job of putting together this space. So if you're looking for anything related to a golf simulator, check out the Indoor Golf Shop. Now, we want you to play this game better. I want to play this game better. So I invited in the 2024 Michigan PGA Section Teacher of the Year, my friend Kyle Martin from the Fortress Golf Course in Frankenmuth. And each week, for the next few weeks, we're going to share with you a, a 7 to 10 minute video on different aspects of the game and helping you improve. But I want to tell you this right at the start. We want to hear from you in the comments below with whatever questions, whatever struggles you may be having in the game so that in future weeks we can specifically address the questions you have. So make sure you check out the comment area below for the link to Indoor Golf Shop and to put your questions and comments in there. And today you're bringing us inside like the 50 yard range where we have these lofted clubs in our hands that, that have such potential here, Kyle. But we're sculling them, we're chunking them, we're costing ourselves shots instead of getting up and down with regularity. So help us out, would you? Yeah, from about inside of 40 yards, you can account about half of your strokes on your scorecard to yards. that distance. So uh, to, to put it plainly, a lot of golfers really stink at this area, and if we can <laughs> no sharpen offense. this area up, you can really see a drastic drop in your score, specifically uh, just understanding how to hit these shots and what keys are important in order to be efficient. Yeah, and one of the things that we often see can be overwhelming in the area of instruction is we, it's not bad. For some who are statistically and data-driven minds, they like to see everything from spin to, to angles to launches to all those things. But it's, this is a feel part of the game as much as anything. And if you're struggling with chunking shots, then all the data in the world doesn't really matter, right? This, yeah, it's this not is, gonna... So this is the 101 level of the scoring zone. Right. And, and one important concept to understand when we're really data-driven, because I have some clients that are very data-driven, can't see numbers on the golf course. So you really have to understand the imagery and how to hit certain shots. And a couple key concepts can really make a difference. And Kyle, you know, is a creative mind as a teacher. And I, I thought he was going to bring in, you know, all of the pool noodles and all of, the, <laughs> all of those gadgets that you've seen in Tin Cup where he was strapped up to everything and there was a tennis ball hanging off his head and all that. You brought a dirty towel. Yeah. What are we I doing here? So the majority of the training aids that, that I use in my lessons uh, all year round really are, exist in your golf bag already. So a towel can, can really show how efficient of a chipper you are. Uh, so all I have is, yeah, my dirty towel. A lot of my college players really hate this drill because it's, <laughs> it's feast or famine. It's pass or fail. All you want to do is take your towel and fold it up. Uh, and we'll lay it flat in a, in a really easy position to, remind, or to remember would be inside of the towel, inside of your trail foot. So for a right-handed golfer, mm -hmm. the inside of the towel would be along the inside of my right foot. And before we hit a golf ball, all we're trying to accomplish is to make sure that we hit ball first. So we'll start with this golf club just barely elevated over the mat. We'll make a backswing. And all we're trying to do is make sure that we miss the towel and strike the ground because we need to be able to find contact with the ground. You won't find too many chip shots you see on TV where they're not hitting the ground. And most people really struggle either catching the ground early, trying to add loft, or they don't hit the ground at all and we skull that ball across the green and all of a sudden this towel keeps getting in my way yeah so so <laughs> low point the the statistic would be called low point controller where the bottom of your golf swing is and historically to hit a, a an efficient chip shot or really a, a shot off the grass not on a tee 
We need to be able to strike ball first, then turf. What do you see more? Thin skulls, ball hit in the forehead, or <laughs> chunks behind the ball? Chunks, yeah, for sure. Because so, we're trying to help in the air. Yeah, a lot, of, right. a lot of people fall victim to believing that just because we had a lot of loft on your club, it should create a lot of height. But most players on the LPGA and PGA Tour hit the shots, all their stock swings, yeah. they hit the ball the same height. Chipping is a whole different arena. So just because we have a lot of loft, we should actually be hitting it lower instead of higher. Is it safe to say that if your chip ends with your body like this, you have probably tried to help it in the air, right? Yes. All the weights 100%. on your back foot, your your shoulder, your left shoulder is pointing to the sky. Yeah, we're trying right? to aid that we ball to get, in the air. We want to get down into it. That's what the towel drill is for, right? Correct. So a couple key, key things to remember. One, the ball should be in the center of your stance to maybe a little closer to your trail foot or your back foot. Uh, and as far as how far the towel should be from the golf ball, just barely wider than the width of your shoe. Is that good there? Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, another I can way to measure it. I can it. set it back another couple feet and never touch the towel. <laughs> right. It would be a lot easier. Right. So our simple goal is can we miss the towel and still find contact with the grass? We're most likely in that situation going to hit the ball first. What if I hit a cold Then chain? hit the ground. So we can't, there are some loopholes for sure. If you catch it off the hosel, we can uh, certainly hit that ball lower and way to the right. So a lot lower than we would, oh, good if it goes. A lot lower than we would typically think a chip shot should go. If we're looking at, if we do have some access to some data, if you're using yeah. indoor golf and, and you have a launch monitor, your launch angle or your vertical launch angle should be almost half of the loft of your golf club. Meaning if you have a 60 degree wedge mm -hmm. and you're chipping around the greens, the ball should take off literally half of that, around 30 degrees. Now, the key to the towel drill is getting steep as opposed to getting flat, right? I mean, that's in, in the bottom line of how I'm supposed to think about this. It's to, to get upright as opposed to taking it back and scooping or sliding into it. Correct. And it's going to benefit two parts of your game, not only chipping from the fairway, but also your distance control chipping from the rough because a lot of people try and sweep that golf ball out of the rough. What happens is that golf club mm. in the grooves on that wedge all of a sudden pick up grass, dirt, moisture, mud, wow. sand, and the ball will slide up the face and we can't control how far it goes. So the steeper we can get where we're hitting a shot with a setup where the face is just slightly open, we can all of a sudden access more of the golf ball into the grooves of that wedge and really control our spin a lot better. It's a very simple drill and one that you can do on the range. You can do it around the chipping area. Sure, your friends might poke fun at you for having the towel down there until you go out and play with them and all of a sudden you're getting up and down and in ways that you didn't used to do. So what, is, what does a breakthrough look like for a student who's come through some of this sort of drill? What, what are the light bulb moments for them? So I'm a hockey guy. I always look at plus minus. So if you're doing this exercise or if you're chipping around the greens, you're going to miss a lot of greens. Typically, most male and female amateur players do. I always look at how many times did I hit a chip shot where I struck ball first. And if I can strike ball first, then the ground, that would be a plus. If we're not, if we're hitting that towel in the exercises or we're catching it fat or thin, when we're chipping on the greens, that would be a minus. And at the end of nine holes, look at what was my plus minus? How many efficient chip shots did I hit? And the more you practice this simple drill with just using a towel, the more you'll start to get in that plus and the lower your scores will get on the scorecard. Okay, we like that formula. Do some practice, put the towel back there about a foot width away from the ball and then don't hit the towel. Right? Don't hit the towel. You have this philosophy, by the way, that most everything you need to improve your game, you, you largely already own, like a towel. Right. Right. This was not complicated. You didn't have to go online and buy a towel somewhere. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I'm, when I'm doing private lessons, I'll get their towel out of their bag and show here's, so it's a familiar imagery for them where, hey, you can use tees, you can use 
uh, ball markers, you can use your towel. A lot of the stuff that you need to get better already exists in your golf bag. Love it. Welcome to the Lesson T with Kyle Martin. Make sure you share with us the questions you have, the areas of your game that you're struggling with. And in a future video, if we address your question, we might even send you a little something. Thanks for watching.